back again into the void of unknown space for yet another dragon. But not exactly to the same place we've been before. See, the astral plane has a lot of parts about it because it's, well, it's absolutely massive. So I'm going to be talking about a different part than the one that the astral dragons dwell in. See, they dwell in a place known as the Astral Sea. But today, I'd like to talk about a dragon that dwells in a place known as Wild Space, the Solar Dragon. But what exactly is the difference between these two places? Well, there's no real distinction between them. There's no wall blocking them off from one another, but there is a, a sort of soft bubble you can pop easily that re It's a little confusing. There are people who travel through these realms that give them different names for clear reasons. They are known as spell jammers, and they're a little insufferable to be entirely honest with you. But I'm going to have to explain how this all works. This can be a little bit confusing, so stay with me here for a moment. So we live in a realm that has a sort of a bubble around it, that dwells in a small system that has a handful of these bubbled realms. And at the centre of the system is a sun, or a solar entity, usually referred to as a star. These systems are completely surrounded by the mostly empty Astral Sea, where the Astral Dragons dwell. But some of these systems have a sort of highway that links them together, linking us to other realms that are a bit similar, but not exactly the same as our own. And these systems and their highways connect... Uh, they are together known as Wild Space. And they are filled with life, practically teeming with it. It is within the Wild Space where Solar Dragons dwell. And they do so in a very specific place. Like I said before, the centre of the systems have a star or a sun. Some of them even have multiple, though this is quite rare. And it is within these stars that solar dragons dwell. That's right, you heard me correctly. They lair within the very sun. And solar dragons are quite strange among dragon kind. Take their shape, for example. See, they have very long bodies like astral dragons. But they only really have one pair of limbs, and they're not arms, believe it or not, but fins. They also have these sort of ghost-like protrusions on their back, which resemble wings quite a lot, but they're actually there mostly for show, as they use their own body and fins when moving through wild space. It's a little confusing, but it probably has some social use to them that I'm just unaware of. They are, of course, absolutely powerful, like all dragons, but they're not exactly out of the ordinary in this regard. They could probably stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with most dragons. That being said, it's kind of close to impossible to actually kill a solar dragon because of, well, like I said before, where it lays is in the centre of a star. And I'm not exactly going to jump headfirst into a star because I'm not exactly sunproof. And, and that's the interesting thing. Being able to enter the sun it's not just being resistant to fire. Red dragons would still struggle to get into the center of the sun and would die before doing so. It's not just heat, but radiance. Pure light that is so powerful, it burns. And solar dragons are uniquely immune to both of these. That's what makes them able to live here. It's also not very surprising that they tend to keep to themselves as well as well, for most of their life, they're not really going to meet anything else, perhaps another sun dragon that dwells within the sun. The only interactions they are going to have is the few times that they enter wild space, and a lot of things aren't even going to speak out there. That being said, they don't actually learn any other language bar draconic. It's not that weird though, most chromatic dragons, for example, learn other languages, they just never speak another, they just think it's either beneath them, or just don't really want to. Something else I'd actually quite like to note is that dragons have a lot of clear personalities and moralities. That's just a given by their kind. Chromatics tend to be more evil aligned, metallics more good, but with solar dragons it's it's up in the air. Like most humanoids, they're never just going to be quite simple, not a paragon or a tyrant. Most of the time, you're going to find a complex being with both good and bad aspects, like well, like I said, like us. Now back to the things that make them more in line with other dragons. Unsurprisingly, they love treasure, but they don't really keep much of it, close to any of it really. As again, they live within the sun, and the sun has the tendency of being incredibly hot, so the only thing they actually try to bring home is gold. Because gold stays in a liquid state when it's in their home, and just sort of floats around the space in the sun. 
I'm told it looks quite beautiful. I wouldn't know, of course, because I've never been inside a sun. They do like treasures and kind of wish that they could hoard them, but they don't really take it in the conventional sense. So if they want to trade, or if you want to give them something as valuable, the thing they would like is food. In wild space, there's not many reliable food sources, and the only thing they're going to really want to get out there and find is the occasional giant space hamster. Those are a thing, by the way. So they want to treat food something akin to treasure. But given how often they must be given food, and how much they don't really seek it out that often, they are probably able to somehow store it like an animal. Maybe they have some sort of gullet. It would also explain how they can go vast amounts of time staying within their lair and never really having to get food, like a snake that could absorb it for, well I guess in their case, years. Something else I'd like to note is that quite a lot of these dragons can dwell within the same sun because, well believe it or not, suns are quite large. So it's not really a lair within the conventional sense, it's more so something that they mostly dwell in, they, they live there, that's their home. And it's quite rare that more than one or two will actually leave. They spend quite a lot of their time with their families and dwell there in a sort of hibernation surrounded by their liquid gold. Oh, and another thing, they are surprisingly really good parents in, well, in, well, anyone's standards. They have a small clutch of eggs that are made of obsidian and become more and more clear as they age. Both parents will look after them and teach them everything. The only condition and rule that they give the younglings is not to leave the sun, which, if your only limit is staying within your own planet, what's well, quite fair if you ask me. They are not very active and are very unlikely to ever enter combat. The only reason they would really do so is if they are hungry and they mistake a spelljammer ship for maybe a giant space whale only to realise that the one thing they took a bite out of is not only not a space whale, but in fact has cannons that are shooting directly into your mouth. And once they do realise this, they'll probably just fly away. Maybe hit the bow once in retaliation, but they don't really want to cause harm to intelligent beings. But for the few times that they do fight, they have some incredible abilities that are, no surprise, sun-related. Their breath weapon is a blast of pure solar energy, which is in essence shooting you with a literal beam from the sun. So yeah, that's a good start, but their other ability is also well, it's quite interesting. They make themselves translucent in a way, and then they begin to glow, and they blast out, their whole body becoming a blinding light of pure, painful, radiant energy. Essentially both blinding you and damaging you with the blindness of the sun, believe it or not. But right, now I'd like to get into the tale of how I actually met a solar dragon, and it surprised me a little, so wait up for that. But to start, I was serving a spelljammer ship under a captain who was... Well, I don't really have a nice opinion of spelljammers for this reason. I found him insufferable, annoying, and personal grudges were just... Oh, ugh. That being aside, we were being hunted. See, there is a race that is surprisingly quite common in the vastness of space, known as the Illithid, or better known as Mind Flayers. And for one reason or another, I don't know why, they were determined to capture our ship. And, well, it's a long story of the horrid things that they actually do to you, and it's more so, I'll tell it for another day. Just know that we would certainly die horrific deaths if they got a hold of us. So, let's leave it at that for now and get back to the chase. So there we were, curtling through space of the occasional destructive blast from the Illithid ship. I was the only one able to hit them back, as every other spellcaster was busy piloting the ship. I remember I almost lost an eye, as an explosion shot a bit of shrapnel directly into my face. The bubble that protected our ship was beginning to weaken because of it, but we managed to keep it stable as we shot through back to our home system. After the last explosion, there was a whole 12 seconds where the bubble was completely ruptured and we were being sucked out into the void, only for it to close at the last second. I thought we were goners at some point, only to see that the captain demanded we go near the local sun, and in a moment of madness started firing cannons into the solar entity, hoping to provoke something that I didn't know about at the time. My shock, a dragon flew out with great speed, and luckily for us, attacked the other ship first, dealing with it very quickly, only to turn to us with anger in its eyes. I stepped forward, since I was the only one who could speak Draconic, and explained the situation to him. 
minus the cannon shooting at him part, and thanked him, asking if he wanted anything in return. And I was a little surprised, almost flabbergasted by the response he gave me. It's been etched into my mind since... Well, you'll see what I mean. His exact words were, and I quote, Oh well, um, I was not actually expecting you to talk back. I'm a bit of an introvert, so I'm just gonna leave now. Uh, bye. End quote. And he flew away, right back into his sun. I didn't expect him to be so... socially awkward? Which was, I think, the best outcome out of that entire scenario. It's weird, but not even close to some of the most bizarre things that happened out there. Spell jamming is truly a unique time, something I am absolutely in no rush to get back to, I assure you, but would recommend at least once to everyone. Solar dragons being socially awkward aside. Thank you for listening to my tales. I'm the Ashborn. Feel free to leave a like, comment, or subscribe. It would really mean a lot to me. But, till next you meet, fellow traveller, have a good day.